It's the, it's the guitar dance. Welcome to the Guitar Dads Podcast, a podcast for guitar dads by guitar dads. This week, break out your cassettes and Walkmans because Mayor is at it again. We go down in a hole with another Lester Custom, and we talk Toto and guitar. But it's not what you think. We're not in Kansas anymore this week on the Guitar Dads Podcast. Now, the guys who pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, Matt and Dave. Hello, everybody. I'm Matt. I'm Dave. What's up? Welcome to episode 29 of a Guitar Dads Podcast. Yes. So, Dave, we're like, you know, this is the last one in our 20s. Last one, of the, I know. I'm feeling a little nostalgic. I know. Should we do like a? Should we do like a best of? Yeah, show? we're gonna have to. Do like a be- <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to do like a best of episode. It's a good idea. We really should. I know. We actually we the probably should 30. do that. Yeah, the first we, we, thirty episodes. So I mean, thank we could you. go back and listen to everything. We we, we I don't we probably just sleep through the whole thing. Yeah, it's gonna know. take a lot of time. I don't, yeah, let's let's yeah. not do that. Let's um, not do that. <laughs> Anyway, but anyway, yeah. Thank you to all the listeners. Thank you to everybody that downloaded an episode this past week. We really appreciate it. You guys really drive the show and and really make this thing for us. We appreciate you on uh, Instagram. All of our followers there. Keep checking us out because we're constantly posting stuff at Guitar Dads Pod. Uh, and yeah, on YouTube, search Guitar Dads. Uh, always content going up there. We love all you guitar dads and guitar parents out there. Yes. Oh, guitar parents. Yes. Guitar this, parents. This is, Guitar parents. Although we would have called the this guitar parents podcast. Yeah, we would have called this. P's. Yeah, we would have called it guitar parents podcast, but it just didn't have the ring as guitar dad. So yeah, I don't like the alliteration there. Yeah, but you know, like we said, we are inclusive here. So if you're a guitar parent of some kind, um, you know, welcome. If you're not a parent but you still like to hear about the plight of guitar parents, you know, welcome aboard to you as well. That's right. And if you're <laughs> out there and you want to have your own podcast about guitars and you're a parent, maybe you could call it the Pickup Parent Podcast. Oh, there you go. Pick up parent. There you go. How's that like, for an alliteration? Like Peter Pick a Pick a Pickle Peppers. Right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All well, right. On that note. On that note, let's get into the news. What news? What guitar daddery news are we getting into this week, Dave? All right. Let's get into our news and notes. Okay. Um, this is actually. Let's start with kind of a cool story because cool I read about story. this today. All right. Have you heard about? Um, so I guess there's a um, uh, an organ. Well, I don't know if it's a, really an organization, but anyway, there's this. Um, there's this thing in that's going on. Well, everybody knows what's going on in Afghanistan, first of all, right now. Yep. We, we, and this isn't a political podcast, but I thought this was a really cool music-associated story with yeah. Afghanistan. Because um, guys like Tom Morello is involved, and oh. uh, Sammy Hagar has done some collaboration with these with this group. Oh. Um, yeah. So there, there's a there's a so this is this is like a group formed by uh, for like. Uh, girls who are orphans on the street or suffered trauma or been victims of war and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, It's a really cool thing to kind of rehab them with music uh, and give them kind of give them a gift of music. Wow. Um, And, and the, this group that Tom Morello is looking for help with to get them out of Afghanistan is, is uh, this is a part of a larger group, but the the particular group that he's referencing is a girl with guitar. Um, and actually it's funny cause I just heard, uh, oh, okay. I was just listening to the Eddie trunk podcast earlier today and he was talking about, uh, I should look up the guy's name because he is, he is kind of more the head of the, the entire, uh, thing. And I, I should look up the, uh, it's called girl with a guitar. Girl, girl, girl with-, with guitar is like a part of a bigger group. And I, I should, I should try to find that. Girl uh, with let me guitar. find I mean, look, you, 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 you chat. I'm, I'm Googling gonna, I'm gonna it now. Find it. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it's kind of a cool thing because these girls, you know, after everything that's happened in Afghanistan in the, in the last uh, in the last week or so, um, you know, these these girls have already gone through a, a ton of trauma in their lives and their young lives, and you know, they they were part of this cool thing to really help them out, and now they're kind of stranded over there, you know, like a lot of other people. So wow, uh, Morello is involved with trying to you know get these these, these people out. Um, and I'm going to find that name right now. It's, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Girl with a Guitar is the organization. And <laughs> yeah, it's, in, it's uh, in Kabul or Kab- Kabul. Yeah, the, mirac- the Miraculous say. Love Kids and Girl with Guitar. It started in 2015, um, which is pretty cool. Yep, I see it here. Uh, I see Tom is seeking help to get female guitar students out of Afghanistan. 
Interesting. Yeah. All right. So if this is something that is interesting to you, this seems like a a thing that maybe you know something to get involved in. Um, it is a yeah. cool story. You know, Tom's always a very political guy, but this, you know, this is kind of like politics aside, and it's about just helping some some oh, girls yeah, no, out. This has nothing to do with politics. This, this is, is helping girls out yeah. in, in Afghanistan with the terrible stuff that's going on over there. So. You know, and these are students similar to those um, those uh, engineering students who, um, you know, did some work with MIT. It sounds like these these are some girls that are are, are guitar are guitar students, and yeah. you know, so this is kind of like the ultimate guitar parent thing. You know, let's let's help support some girls um, that are in a bad situation. So yeah, this is cool, Dave. Yeah, and it's like, I guess the, the Lanny Cordola. I don't actually know who that is. Do you? No, I don't know who that is. All right, so we don't. Is know he who the that. guy? Anyway, he's, he, the, he's the yeah. It's a band I never heard of called House of Lords. Apparently, um, yeah. So maybe some of you guys like, know who that is. He kind of like he's kind of like the the leader of this whole thing and been founded this whole thing. So yeah, it's a cool it's a cool thing. So so look that up, check it out. If there's any way that any, anybody who's listening can help in any way, that would be that would be I'm sure appreciated by a lot of people. So, yeah, yeah, so that's a good shout cool out. to mention that. That's a good shout out, Dave. Thank you. All right. Well, let's let's get into some actual fun stuff. Yeah. You pointed this. You you sent this. I oh, didn't yeah. even realize this. <laughs> yeah, you this sent is this good. to me the other night, and I was kind of I you you were like I, you said something like, "Is this like a rehearsal or what is the?" Yeah, yeah. What's going on here? Have you seen Mayer recently? You so you you tell. Yeah, I'll tell the story. This. So John Mayer posted a picture of himself. John Mayer has been on the Dead and Company tour for you know a few weeks now i don't know how long the tour has been going on dave and i we've talked about before we're not deadheads i think we appreciate the dead for what they do but we're not like real deadheads at all we can't really get into the into the music um but anyway so john mayer of course is part of the dead and company shows and he posted a picture of himself at the dead and company with headphones on and he said oh by the way um I'm wearing headphones now on stage i feel much more connected to what's going on um and not as distracted. Like headphones, like actual, yeah, you like know, not giant in-ear monitors, 80s, like yeah. headphones, yeah. Because he's worn in-ear monitors. I've seen him on stage with in-ear monitors on, right? Because he plays massive stages, and for the most part, if you're on a massive stage, you're on in-ear monitors, unless you're like really against it, like like Aerosmith, like Joe Perry. Although I think Steve, I think Steven Tyler actually wears 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 in ears now but but joe perry i know is has said a lot of things against it and yeah black crows aren't into it either but anyway so john yeah. actually came out and said you know um i'm wearing headphones now i feel like it's much better for me and i feel much more connected to the instrument and to the into the music in the, in the, into what's going on on stage around me so i thought it was really funny it's just like an aside so you're a you're a performing guitarist <laughs> like do you how would you do you think that even i mean you you you, you use I you, yeah so. in my little cover band i use in-ear monitors because we happen to have this set up to do so and to me it's as a singer and a guitar player it's like the greatest thing ever because especially when you're you know, maybe if I was the only guitar player in the band and I was singing, it wouldn't be that bad. But there's always another guitar player in the band that in bands that I've been in. And when you have two amps and a kind of smaller space is kind of competing for sound, it's, it gets difficult and it gets loud. So yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, like you have to find your different your different kind of sonic spaces. And that's how it, how it works. But it's always like way too much, way too loud. Right. But how are these? So in, in terms of your in terms of your custom molded ear, uh, in-ears, like, yeah, how, how is that any different than wearing headphones? Yeah, why, I would think why, that was why is is that, wearing headphones. I mean, the only thing I can think of is that they're not. So the custom ones that I have, the molded one, which is I'm sure what John Mayer has used in the past, um, you really don't hear anything. You only hear what's in your ears. They really cut you off completely from wow. what's going on. So the only way that I can hear the crowd and I can hear things going on when when I'm on stage is through the kind of mics, right? Because we have like enough like vocal mics on stage that you know, you hear the crowd kind of scream through that, right? That's the only way I can really hear what's going on. Oh, um, wow. I didn't yeah. realize they cut you out that they much. Cut you, so if, you pretty, one, if you get the molded one, if you get the molded ones, they completely cut you off. Actually, on big stages, they have crowd mics out there for that reason. 
So there's a mic out there in the crowd so that they can, that the performers can actually, and that gets mixed into the, to the performer's mix and they can hear, you know, the crowd sounds as well. So it's, Jeez, it's talk about noise cancellation. Yeah, Bo- they are, Bose no. ain't got nothing on oh, this. Oh dude, it's, it's, um, it's unbelievable. Like when I was in, in my old rehearsal space that we used to be in my, in my drummer's house, he had a really nice setup that was all acoustically treated. So the drums didn't bang off the walls and make all kinds of noises. And I was on the other side of the room. It was it wasn't a huge room, but it was a, a decent sized room in his basement. And, and when I had these in ear headphones on, um, in ear monitors on, I couldn't hear his drums. So I had wow. to mic. So his drums are mic'd up because he likes to record and everything, and he has it for himself. For for he has uh, in ears himself. So I would have to put the drums on because there wasn't enough bleed happening from a vocal. So I couldn't hear the drums. The same thing happened. We played a, an outdoor gig a couple of weeks ago and I was, and we, we were really spread out and because it was outside, you know, I couldn't hear the drums. So I had to make sure I mixed in his drums in my, and, and you, and you all know, that's incredible. I think everybody that knows how mind, loud that's acoustic actually, drums are. They're very loud. That, that is know. very mind blowing to me. How yeah. cut out of you are with those. I mean, yeah, I, I, I got to imagine you got to be able to hear some, but I guess once everything's kind of you can hear you know, something you can hear something but yeah but i guess once everything's kind of you know zoned in and in yeah. terms of the sound that you want in your ears you're really not really paying attention to anything but yeah right? and and from what i can tell from the pictures of john mayer he's got these things that kind of rest on his ears they're not completely noise canceling headphones so he probably gets a little bit of the ambient sound from his amps blaring on stage and from the drum like everything going on on stage he's getting and then he has his own kind of mix in his headphones as well so that's almost mm. like the best of both worlds so i can totally that see is interesting i can totally see why he's he's into it i mean it looks a little goofy but he just looks like a goon I mean, <laughs> he, he looks like a looks a little goofy and and you know, I think if you looked closely, Dave, it looked like he might have had his headphones hooked up to a Walkman. Is that is that right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, I don't really. is that the is that the is that the is that, the, is that just the uh, the wireless? No, no, that's not the wireless. That's that's actually a Walkman. He's really taking this '80s thing to an extreme. Seriously, he's got the cassettes going. <laughs> I mean, he looks like he's practicing in his basement, like plugged in like a spark or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what's he what's he playing into a Line Six Spider? What's he doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and is. that would be good yeah yeah it's that, really that funny would... so it actually is a funny thing but then like on that same instagram post dave if you scroll over because the instagram post was really about like i'm having such a he's saying like i'm having such a great time playing here like we're having some great um jams and it's just really like he was talking about how great it is for his soul and all this and then like you scroll over and you see a picture of bob weir and it's like, what the heck's going on with Bob Weir? Bob Weir should no longer be in anything called Dead and Company. He should just be in something called Dead. Because he, <laughs> he's there. If, if you see this picture, check it out on Mayor. It was on Mayor's Instagram. Yeah, so Mayor's. check. So so pull it up and take a look at this picture of Bob Weir. I mean, the guy looks like it looks like he spent the pandemic on a desert island. They rescued him and then plopped him immediately on a stage to play a show. Yeah, he's I mean, got like cut off shorts like. and like a tattered t-shirt. He's got like the beard and the, <laughs> I, mean, I guess they always had beard and long hair, but he's got the white hair. It's like, it looks like he went backstage and he was talking to a volleyball named Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's really weird. And then like for some reason during the set, he wrote a giant SOS on the stage. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> People didn't know what the hell he was talking about. <sighs> I mean, if I was looking at that, I'm thinking, like, who, who knew Blue from old school was in Dead and Company? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there was an outdoor show and a plane flew by. He started a giant brush fire and started waving his arms. <laughs> oh, poor Bob okay. Weir. <laughs> Okay, How old that's is that dude that. anyway? He's got to be getting up there, he's right? Pretty, I mean, he's pretty old. I mean, I, I don't think he's. I don't. I mean, he's seventy. I mean, right? like I, I gotta, I gotta believe like mid seventies, right? I mean, uh, let me see. Bob I mean, in the is. picture, he looks like he's in his mid nineties, but I think he's in his. He's seventy three. He's seventy three. Wow. He, yeah. That's you it. know what? And we talk about this almost every show, but you look at some of these rockers that have just like lived the life, and somehow they've just evaded age, like Sammy Hagar and oh, yeah. kind of like Steven Tyler. Yeah. And and you know and then you have the guys like Keith Richards who who from the looks of it hasn't really evaded age, but he can still really get around and play. Yeah, exactly. And then you right. got guys like Bob Weir, same thing. Like he hasn't he looks 
he looks like he's 20 years older than he really is, but he can still really get out there, you know? And no, he, and apparently these shows are going really well. Like, I'm, I'm not a dead fan, but um, my what my wife's cousin is. He's He's been a deadhead. For, he, he's a little bit older than, than, than us. He's been a deadhead, like, you know, for, forever since, like, he's been, like, in high school. And I asked him, I go... Well, he, he was like, oh, yeah, we're going to see Dead and Company. This was this was pre-pandemic. And I was like, what do you think about John Mayer being in the in the dead now, like in this Dead and Company? He was like, it's awesome. It's great. He plays the Jerry part and it's 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 great jams. It's a great time. And I'm like, OK, well, so I think the fans have kind of like accepted John Mayer a little bit um, in this yeah, way. No, I definitely you know, yeah, which kind sure. of interesting. But but do you, if you remember, there was an interview like when um with Chris Robinson from the Black Crows, who, as you guys know, are big are big deadheads, right? Like that. I think we've talked about this in podcasts. Where the reason they yeah. did Hard to Handle is because the Dead had covered Hard to Handle, and it was like a thing that was exciting for them to do in their set occasionally. So that's why the Crows actually did their their own cover of Hard, uh, of of hard to handle because it was ah uh, yeah i think you told me that once yeah, yeah no that's true no a friend of ours did my our friend roger roger if you're listening we're going to tell the story oh yes yes if, if you're listening roger this. we're going to tell the story so so roger and dave and i were on a ski trip and we were driving up and it's like an hour three hour long drive Are we have we told this on the podcast before anyway i don't think we it was have. like it was like a three hour long drive and we were listening like the heart hard to handle by the black crows came, came on he was like you know this is why they covered it because they were deadheads and i knew he he was right because I heard him. I heard Chris Robinson talk about how much he loves the dead, and you know that Chris Robinson's kind of solo thing was very dead inspired, very as well. dead inspired. So anyway, yes. so like so so our friend Roger's like, hey guys, you guys want to hear this version of uh, the Dead's version of Hard to Handle? And we're like, um, not really, but okay. Why we we're like, why? Well, all right, we got uh, we got like an hour to kill. Why don't you go ahead and play it? Like a half hour later, the most boring version ever. Of <laughs> like twenty three <laughs> minutes. And, 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 you're talking, like, and you're looking at you're looking at two guys who were yeah. into Dave Matthews so hard yeah, in yeah, college yeah. and loved the jam stuff, which is ironic for us because being guitar dads, right? I mean, we we loved we were obsessed with Dave Matthews. Oh yeah, we loved Dave he, Matthews. Yeah. But that was the only jam music we really were into. Which I is kind of I mean, I still when I look back at it, I kind of wonder. I discovered you know, the like Dave why? Matthews channel on Sirius XM, and you know, I listened oh, to it's it. It's great. But anyway, that's great. But why? Why? What? So that's yeah, interesting for I don't us. Know. Like we're huge Dave Matthews fans, but we really don't like any other kind of jam jam band kind of music. Yeah, it's not our thing. We're not into the jam. It's not really our thing. So, but anyway. it's interesting too because you pointed out, like, if you look at these pictures on Instagram, the crowd is is very, it's very split. You know, you definitely have that total John Mayer crowd just there to see John Mayer, and and you and you see like like the deadheads you know it's really, i think uh, yeah you know it's a weird juxtaposition yep. and i think he has got in some younger fans into the dead i think absolutely oh, he totally he has. has so it, it's a cool look it's not our thing but it's a cool thing that he's doing and it seems oh, to no, be going incredibly cool. well for yeah. the dead guys cool. and for him so you know good for him with his headphones and all it'll be interesting to see if he does it with his own tour <laughs> it might yeah, it I might know. be that he's only doing it because there's so many other guitar players on stage you know, and and he wants to make sure that he can hear himself properly and all that. I wonder if he won't actually do it when he gets his own solo stuff going. So oh, that's a good point. It'd be interesting, yeah. interesting to see. So anyway, what other news we got? So Dave? anyway, what other news? We got one last piece of news. We'll finish on Bonnaroo has been canceled because of the recent. Oh uh, yeah, I saw hurric- that hurricane slash whatever you want to call yeah, storm what Ida going through Tennessee and causing a lot of flooding, which is terrible, and we feel bad for everybody that's been affected. It is. But it's yeah, the festival has been canceled because it was supposed to be this this coming weekend, and the flooding has uh, has caused it to be canceled. <laughs> it so uh, that's the, too bad. It flooded the field where they were going to do it. Oh man, it's yeah. terrible. Yep. Canceled. I know. Look, if it isn't for COVID, then we got floods. Like, oh my god, we talk about floods. Talk about the apocalypse. Oh my god. I was just going to say this is so apocalyptic. Well, actually, this is a good transition. Speaking of apocalypse. Wait a minute. If we were gonna if we were gonna transition from apocalyptic to anything, it would be hailstorm. Oh, hailstorm. Well, I mean, look, hailstorm. We we talked about hailstorm a couple of episodes ago. Go go listen yeah. to their new song. Oh, completely awesome. Cool. Um, but anyway, but speaking sp- of apocalypse. Speaking of apocalypse, there was there's a great story. There's a there's a guitar dad guy that we love. I don't think he himself is a guitar dad, but he's a great guitar dad a- artist, Jared James Nichols, who is. It's amazing Les Paul guy, blues player. If you haven't if you don't know who he is, go and check him out. He actually came across 
an original Les Paul gold top. The story is the gold top was one of the first Les Pauls ever made. So when was that date? It's like a 50, 54, right? 54, when, whenever the Somewhere first year of the, of the Les Paul was made. This thing went through, and this guy had it like in a closet somewhere. I don't know if it was the original owner or like a family member of the original. It was a, the guitar that was in a family for a while. And the thing was destroyed in a tornado, or almost completely destroyed in a tornado in 2013 is the story. And... And Jar and this thing like is tattered up. The neck complete is basically just the body in the it's just the body and like and a the P nineties. But yeah. the body, the P nineties are still in it. It looks like the yep. electronics are kind of I don't know. I would say intact, but they're still there. The knobs are there. The switches are there, and the neck is just like completely snapped off. Like there's no neck. It's just a body. So Jared James Nichols went and, and had a, a luthier completely restore this, put a beautiful neck on. I think he said it was a Brazilian rosewood, you know, a mahogany neck with a Brazilian rosewood fretboard. And it, now it just looks like unbelievable. It, it says, yeah, what a great it, it was job. A, he, this guy did what an amazing, it, I mean, this thing this looks, it looks crazy. It's, it's one of the first ever Gibson Les Pauls from 1952. Oh, 52. 52. Wow. And, and it literally survived. That's incredible. It literally survived EF4 t- tornado. So, so. That's And insane. it happened in 2013. It was, it tore through Washington, Illinois. And yep. it, it really was a devastating thing. But this thing, the original owner was found with it. Um, like I say, it was a family member of the original owner. And um, the guy, I guess, sold it to Jared, and Jared got it restored, and he is out there rocking it, and it just looks incredible. So go check it out, like Jared James Nichols, type it in. And what did he call the guitar? Because it survived the tornado, Dorothy. Dorothy. <laughs> So, so if you didn't get that from my intro, I mean, then there you go. Is there anything cooler than this story? This cool is like story. one of the greatest guitar stories ever. It, I think it is one of yeah, the, yeah. I think it is the greatest guitar story ever. It's an incredible. I mean, yeah. just the just the workmanship, just the 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 the, uh, the skill that it takes to restore that guitar. From yeah. what, if you look at this picture from what it was to what it is, well, but, it's but, unbelievable. But he, here's the thing: he he told them he said, "Don't touch the body. Leave the patina. Leave the scratches. Leave everything. Just get it fixed up, and you know, get it working." And that's what he did. So the original kind of, you know, I wouldn't call it, it's like, a, it's real um, relicking is what it is. Yeah, well, um, I mean, yeah. And so it's like this beat up looking body with this incredible looking neck. And the guy actually no, but went, it looks, it just looks so cool. The guy went and relic the neck as well. So the neck doesn't look like brand new and out of place. Yeah, the guy did an amazing yeah, it job. Looks really, it looks really cool. And this is just such a cool story. Yeah. Um, about this so Jerry James cool Nichols. so Dave we got to go see this guy and see this thing in person I mean he's he's an awesome uh, uh, artist oh he's no a fantastic he's playing, artist yeah if you, but if you, you know. don't if you if you want to see what some of the if you want to see what this guy can do you, you really should try we talked about this in the podcast a, a number yeah. of months ago but yeah. um when when the you know when Gibson did their did their, their thing that that feature that artist feature thing he was he was on there, and you think didn't he play with uh, with Joe? He Bonham played with Joe. Right? They did uh, they yeah. did a they did a great version of um, of Down at the Crossroads. Yeah, Down yeah, at yeah, the yeah. Crossroads. Fantastic. Just called, just called this, Crossroads. This guy's great. But anyway, it's it's awesome, and we've talked about him before. He has a couple of Epiphone signatures where it's a sig, it's like a it's Epiphone like it's like an Epiphone Les Paul custom with the single P ninety in the in the bridge. So really cool gu- guitars. This guy is like. He's like the ultimate guitar dad artist, like next to Joe Bonamassa. Yeah, <laughs> he, he really is. <laughs> he really is. So anyway, he's but now he's, transitioning away from a non-guitar. Well, maybe kind nah, of a guitar he's, dad. This guy's super in the guitar dad realm. Uh, Jerry Cantrell. You think so? Oh, Jerry, Jerry Cantrell. Cantrell yeah. He's like a super guitar dad hero. Is he like a guitar dad? Like dad? Like I mean, you're you're compared. You, we just went from Bonamassa and Jared James Nichols to to Jerry Cantrell. I don't know if they're in the same mix. Well, I don't think you, you know. I I think you're right. I think it's more like the younger guitar dads. Like I guess I, I don't know if we call ourselves young, but 
yeah, I think you're right. It's the people that kind of <laughs> well, if, if you're gonna date us, I guess you know. It's the people that came of age in the '90s when that when when grunge was really, which is a lot of guitar dads out there now. So, so I would say this guy is a very guitar dadery thing. So anyway, so you want me to talk about it, Dave, or you want to talk about it? Yeah, let's this 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 wine, this Jerry Cantrell. Yeah, wine so over. Jerry Cantrell. So Gibson has released. It's a what is it? A Murphy aged. Mm-hmm. Jerry Cantrell Les Paul custom called Wino because it's a wine red, yeah. and it looks really cool. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be. Let's talk about the specs on it. Then I'll hit you with the price. Actually, you, do you know the price, Dave? Because I think you should. I do know the price. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. I was going to say we could play a. That's get, why I said you could afford game. it. You should get one for everybody. Um, it's the yeah, it's the Murphy Lab. If you guys don't know what the Murphy Lab is, is this guy something Murphy? What's his name? Joe oh, Murphy. You're put me on the spot. I'm making is up his Joe probably is. He's like it Joe Murphy. Joe Murphy. It's this dude that makes these kind of relics and aging of Les Pauls. And we're and, so prepared on the guitar. Dad and Gibson, podcast, aren't we? Yes, and Gibson has recently l- have launched this thing called the Murphy Lab. It used to be like Murphy did these like one-off things in the custom shop, and they were incredibly rare. They were incredibly expensive. So now what they did is they actually have a part of the custom shop. There's something called the Murphy Lab. So basically, like if you want to have a custom shop and really double the price of it, you get a Murphy Lab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's basically what it is. But supposedly, like you know, they're really like they're kind of hand age. He supposedly has trained people to do this, and it's under his tutelage of how to do this work. And people just say that these guitars just feel and play incredible. So that's what this is. This is, I think, this is probably one of the first signatures to come out of the Murphy Lab. So it's pretty cool. So it's got, like I said, it's wine red. And it's got a, let's see, let's see if I can go through the, um, it's got a, it's only got a f- 100 made. Only 100 made. Only They're 100 all hand made, signed. 12 inch radius ebony. It's got an, it's got an ebony f- fingerboard, which is awesome. If you're going to have a Les Paul custom, it's got to have an ebony fingerboard. In my and opinion. I like what I, I like what they did with the, with the, with the pickups. Cause they get the, 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 the 490R and the 498T pickups, but the, the neck pickup has the gold cover on it and i like the fact that i left the cover off with the exposed coils on the on the on the bridge yeah it's kind of like a jimmy yeah that's like the jimmy page thing that they used yeah exactly right yeah so it's it's really cool so exactly right dave the other thing the little cool thing that's in here is there a is there is a piezo pickup there is a yes in there as well so for um you know you can get and that takes the place that takes the that that knob that what do they do they put that as like one of the where the within like the the neck uh, the neck pickup or the or the bridge pickup no, uh, tone knob would be, but that that controls the piezo, right, or something. I don't remember. Um, yeah, something that the the volume pot's controlling the neck and bridge humbuckers, master tone knob, and a third volume pot in place of where the Les Paul's bridge tone usually sits, which controls the output of the piezo. So you were right, Dave. Yeah. So yeah. that's really cool. So that's very um, cool. It's got 500k CTS pots. Blah blah. blah. Now hit us with the price. And there's there's actually a nine volt uh, battery in there as well to to power the piezo. Just so you guys know, it's kind of interesting. Um, anyway, batteries included nine thousand dollars USDs. And I've already seen them on Reverb for like thirteen thousand. Yeah, they're only going to make a hundred of these. Yeah. So there you go. So I'm sure these yeah. are already sold out. You know, get your hands on get your hands on one on yeah, Reverb. I'm sure collectors are out there and they're like, boom, I'm buying it. I mean, I mean, it's pretty cool looking. I mean, obviously, this isn't something for us as guitar dads that actually have to support families and aren't super wealthy. <laughs> but, um, but it is, but it's, but, but they it's are, but they cool. are gold guitars. Yes, <laughs> I mean this. This thing is. Let me just say, this thing is badass. I really, I actually, that's so. That's probably my my second favorite color of a Les Paul custom and I'm going on a limb here you 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 would say Matt what about the sunburst what about all these no bursts? I'll, I'm gonna and tell I you would I'm say, gonna tell you I would say I like the black one and then I would go to the wine red I think it looks sexy I'm gonna tell I I, I wholeheartedly agree and I'll yeah. tell you why you know and you know and you'll remember this story when you yeah. first because you got me into acoustic back in college and then yeah. you finally convinced me to consider electric and when I when I bought, I ended up going to Guitar Center and I bought an Epiphone tr- uh, Epiphone Trad, and it was in wine red. 
Oh yeah, that that's was, right. It, that's right. And, I, and the only reason I bought it because is because I and you would at that time you would you were really trying to convince me hard to to, to pick up an electric, and I wasn't quite oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, the Epiphone Les Paul. And I yeah. went in and I saw this thing, this this used guitar sitting on the wall, and I and I thought that thing looks cool. I love <laughs> this cool. color. Yeah. It looks cool. So I love the color and it really turned me on. And that was the first, that was kind of the first, and before I really knew what the heck it really was and the, and you know, the, the, you know, all this stuff, I was just like, that guitar looks really cool. I want to play that. This looks cool. I'll tell you. So, so I'm usually a fan, like I said, I love the wine red, but I, I still maintain that the gold hardware, I really only like on black Les Paul customs. Or I white, don't, I don't black really, or white. I like white. it on this. I don't like the gold. I don't like the gold hardware on any guitar. For some reason, I like it on this. Okay, well, I was gonna say I usually don't like it on the wine red, but on this, they're kind of aged. It's like an aged gold hardware, and it looks really cool. I mean, they just did a great job with this, and it's got. The, I think I, maybe it's got the it, speed it knobs. I love the speed. I'll tell you what, I got speed knobs on my um my 2013 um Les Paul T. Does that make um, you play faster? The speed, I don't know. I like them so much better. They're just beefier. <laughs> They're much better than the witch hat knobs that I have on my on my standard. So, um, I I like them quite a bit. So uh, anyway, th- this is this is a this is a really cool cool guitar. It's um, a very cool guitar. I think you like. I think I maybe like the gold the gold hardware only because the bridge pickup has the exposed yeah, yeah, coils, yeah. and I like that look too. It just looks cool. But but I, cool. I but I think you also like it because it isn't like sparkling gold. It's like kind of patine it a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's definitely really cool looking. So this is this is a really this is I mean Gibson is puts out these these um these custom shops and they're just ridiculous. So yeah, this I think they knocked it out of the park. Yeah, this it. thing is great. I mean, it's pretty cool with Jerry Cantrell. So anyway, so there's that, Dave. What There's that. Now, <laughs> speaking of uh, speaking of unaffordable things, oh for the yeah, guitar yeah, dad. yeah. This is the high end gear um, podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do we get next? You want to talk about the Clon YouTube channel? Let's do it. Okay, so apparently Bill and yes, Finnegan. there is now apparently a Clon YouTube channel. <laughs> Yeah, we, we're really good at this. So Bill um, Finnegan, who is the dude that, you know, made the cl- original Klon, and he still makes KTRs, and apparently he still have, uh, occasionally makes Klons and, and, and sells them, like, on eBay or Reverb, and he gives the proceeds to charity, or, like, he has, like, a friend or neighbor that's in need, and he gives the proceeds to that person. So he's still doing that, and he still does the KTRs, like, when he has time and when he wants to do them. So... For and he sells those for reasonable prices. So apparently he is starting a, a YouTube channel where he's going to give live streams to talk about what's going on with him, what's going on with KTR, um, and it's going to be kind of interesting. I mean, I don't know. What do you think, Dave? Are you going to watch this? Oh, absolutely. I mean, are you going to watch <laughs> this? Are you even asking me a serious question tonight? <laughs> I think we're going to watch it. Want- how much wine? How much wine? Red, red wine? Have you had? <laughs> Are you serious? I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google it. I should have had it in our notes here. Because of course, this is just gonna be part of the rabbit hole that is YouTube, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you kind of, it kind of pushes into one thing. All of a sudden, next thing you know, you're subscribing. Speaking of, subscribe to our Guitar Dad's channel while you're at it. Um, yeah, no, I think that I think this is gonna be really cool because you know, it's just, a, it's just another kind of. Like, it, you know, there's so many channels out there that talk about gear, but here you have the original, you know, creator yep. of this like iconic pedal. And I just think it's a, it, it's probably going to be a very, it's probably going to be very interesting content. I don't know. I mean, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm, I just pulled it up. So I, I think it's going to be cool. It actually, so we're recording this on a, on a Thursday night. It's happening tomorrow night, uh, Friday, September 3rd. So by the time this podcast yeah, airs, yeah. by the time this podcast airs, this will have, will have happened. But that's when the live stream is happening. He's going to do some, um, he's going to show his own clon uh, collection um, comprising of a gold a Centaur and two KTRs. He's going to talk about them. Um, he's going to give an update regarding the production of the company's KTR pedal, an updated reissue a version of the original Centaur. That, oh, yeah, that's what the KTR is, just in case you guys don't know what that is. It's basically like a clone that this guy makes. And you can get them. You just got to get like on a waiting list. Um, so it's going to be cool. I will definitely be watching this tomorrow. Like Dave, the King of Tone? At 9.30. Yeah, um, it, it, I think it, it, the KTR has become like a King of Tone thing because the demand is so high. Yeah. So anyway. 
But I'm like I said, we, yeah. like we talked about last very week. Cool. I'm very happy with the Tumnus. I'm very happy with the with the Archer, and I'm going to get a couple of more Klon clones, and it's going to be fun. So okay, so I was just gonna, I was going to put you on the spot because we talked about this last week. Yeah. Uh, so you've had now a week to play with the Archer. I love and, the Archer, and we talked earlier. We talked last week about uh, whether you like the Tumnus better or you like the Archer better, and then we talked about you got two boards. I didn't play. So I haven't. Go I haven't put them head new- to head yet because I've just been playing too much with the Archer. But you want to get after a couple of new clones, or new clones. So what are you going after? You, you said you're going to go after the uh, the, the, uh, the last week's episode, the Ryra, right? Anything? What else? What um, else? The guitar dad, the guitar dad audience is really dying. They want to know What's what other next clone clones. Clone? Yes. Well, I don't know. You guys, let us know in the comments. <laughs> Yeah, let us know in the comments. Tell please. us what clon clone you guys, what's your favorite clon clone? Yeah, so I think the Ryra is the one that always pops up, the Archer. And, you know, the KTR, of course, is an option if you can get your hands on one. Um, and like I said, the other thing I'm interested in, Dave, is that Serotoni one. Um, oh, right, yes. That's another thing Talked that, about that, last week. that people are interested in. I don't know if I'm going to spring for that, but... We'll yeah, see. leave leave it in the comments. Whatever you whatever you want to <laughs> what us whatever you want us to talk about when it comes to like a clon clone, Matt will buy it. You know, I will buy anything. I will. You tell yeah. me you tell me what what clon clone to buy, and I promise you, I will buy it. As we say on the Guitar Dads podcast, is it too much? Is it? <laughs> hey, this isn't like Josh Scott's house with all the all the pedals. Oh my jeez! I seriously. I mean, jeez. I mean, it's not that bad, right? So. It's getting there. Yeah, yeah, you know. But soon, soon enough, this room, I'm not going to be able to sit in this room. It's just going to be like, that's like filled up of gear and all this stuff. Yeah, he's got yeah, That's like a museum of pedals. Oh, I mean, it's unbelievable. That, I think that's I, unbelievable. You know, that, you know, I think um, he's talked about it, and I think he said that he has something like 5,000 pedals. Can you imagine? Yeah, it's in the yeah, it's in the mid thousands. Yeah, 5,000 yeah, pedals. I mean, that's completely and, insane. And he knows everything about every single pedal. Oh, yeah, he does. He does. So. Yeah. It's pretty incredible his knowledge. It's kind of unbelievable. All right. Yeah. So that is that that is that all we got for today this week, Dave? I think that's all we got this week. All right. Uh so yeah, make sure you check us out on Instagram. We're constantly posting at Guitar Dad's Pod. Uh and check us out on YouTube. Make sure you check out uh my latest post which uh which was my uh Squire Classic Vibe Stratocaster. Yes. Don't mind the playing. Red, red 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 light uh red light syndrome is real but yeah check it out because it is real about that things yeah and matt's eventually going to be doing a a a a a, 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 a um, what do you want to call it a um you know an ab comparison of the tumnus versus the archer right a uh, tumnus versus archer we will do that yeah. yes I just yeah, gotta like uh, you know, like I said, it's the summer. We're guitar dads. We're always busy on the weekends. When this wet weather starts getting cooler, uh, you know, and I'm not out as much in, during the weekends, I will um, start getting that stuff done. I mean, all all you really need to do is cr- is dime the amp and hit an A, and then hit another A, and there's your comparison. I mean, that's, that's it. I mean, it's kind of true, right? That's but I don't know. Need. I figure I got to play some licks too, Dave. You gotta play some licks, yeah. Play some licks. You gotta so, play some licks so the people can actually hear the comparison. I'll play like the two licks I know. Jeez, that's <laughs> two more than I know. <laughs> hey, you know, we gotta, we're, we're making progress here. We're making uh, progress here, nice. and I think that was the uh, Guitar Dad's podcast this week. Catch you guys on the flip. <laughs>